The Mac Foundation is a philanthropic organization that aims to improve the health and well-being of people and advance their lives through science and technology. Its efforts are primarily focused on improving access to innovative healthcare solutions in underserved communities, building healthcare and scientific research capacity, and empowering people in STEM, with a special focus on women and youth. In this program this week, the International Sphere was privileged to talk to Dr. Rasha Kellage, the CEO of Mac Foundation, President of Mac More Than a Mother. Madam, please uh, welcome here on the set on this program, the International Sphere. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just to begin our, our program, uh, let our discussion be that, um, what is the role of Mac Foundation and what exactly is that you do? So just to give you a brief, Merck Foundation is the first foundation owned by uh, Merck KGA e Darmstadt, Germany. It's a, a pharmaceutical and chemical uh, company. Uh, and it's actually the oldest pharmaceutical and chemical company in the world, established 350 years ago. So they uh, decided to establish the Merck Foundation. And as I said, uh, this is the first foundation. But before that, through all the generation, uh, Merck has uh, the corporate social responsibility as part of their DNA. So, uh, of course, we have a lot of programs uh, uh, about access, improving access to health and building capacity and training doctors. We decided in uh, last year to build the foundation and I became the CEO of the foundation. So I'm very proud of this. So we can uh, consolidate all our programs and our efforts under one umbrella. So, uh, of course, uh, as we said, uh, we focus mainly on three uh, 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 um, objectives. Uh, the first one is building capacity in fields of uh, healthcare and research, and also empowering women and youth in science and technology, and improving access to awareness, building advocacy, and many other things. So uh, this is the uh, the 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 main um uh, like uh, the uh, main uh, projects or main uh, focus of the foundation. Of course, we have, as you heard uh, before uh, about it, it's a very famous campaign called Merck More Than a Mother, which is very much uh, uh, focusing on infertility and empowering infertile women in uh, through access to information and uh, health and change of mindset. And also we have very important program which also implemented in Tanzania, which is Merck Cancer Access Program, where we uh, train oncologists uh, to be able to practice standalone in their own countries. And of course, this will uh, improve dramatically, significantly, the access to cancer care mm -hmm. in, in Tanzania. Okay, you have mentioned on the issue of building health care capacity in Tanzania. Uh, on what grounds have you uh, achieved that? Because um, you have mentioned on the programs that you're trying to bring out in the limelight here in Tanzania or in Africa, across Africa, mm -hmm. but in Tanzania per se, uh, what are the uh, healthcare capacity that you've yes. brought of, up? Yes, yeah. uh, we focused on uh, four uh, non-communicable diseases, which is diabetes and hypertension and cancer and fertility. So uh, in the diabetes and hypertension, we launched a very big uh, uh, program from 2013 uh, to uh, provide clinical diabetes and hypertension man management to undergraduates uh, and students in the universities. And then we evolved with this uh, uh, program to uh, diabetes and hypertension award. Uh, 
which is uh, uh, Merck Foundation decided to launch this award to encourage all the GPs and you know the postgraduates to uh, uh, propose ideas, uh, concept papers, how to improve uh, uh, awareness about diabetes and hypertension in their own countries and from each country we select every year two winners and these two winners will provide them with one year on uh, online diploma from UK University uh, diabetes diploma or cardiovascular preventive diseases diploma and of course this is uh, with the aim to establish a big platform of diabetes and hypertension experts and we started that in Tanzania and we have the winners every year. Uh, of course, cancer uh, is very important also because we decided to uh, to do this big fellowship program, which is a one-year fellowship programs and two years and three years in India and uh, one of the, the other part of the program in University of Nairobi and another part in University of Alexandria. And actually, we have candidates from Tanzania, from the from, uh, uh, Ministry of Health, to uh, conduct this uh, one-year fellowship programs in medical oncologists, knowing that in Tanzania there is no medical oncologist, it's only clinical oncologist and radiotherapist. So medical oncologist is very important and needed. And we actually graduated the first medical oncologist in Tanzania, which is Dr. Christina. We met her today to evaluate the post-training. Uh, uh, evaluation and how in her interaction with the patients and how this impacted on the patient's quality of life and treatment and it was really successful. So in this program specifically we have up to now in one year uh, and they will continue also to, the, to this year 50 oncologists from across Africa. Across the, Africa. Yes, from, from across Tanzania, Africa. How many? Uh, we have uh, one and we are in plan to have another four and they're going to be enrolled uh, very much in this 2018 that's why we are here today so every year we will have uh, numbers of, of, uh, of oncologists See, uh, you have to understand that you cannot have masses of yeah, oncologists of yeah. course it's very sophisticated um, speciality and needed to uh, to be very much specific to uh, to a certain um, uh, speciality and they have to be internists and stuff so I think this will be a great uh, addition and value to improve cancer care in Tanzania Mm -hmm. uh, very good information. Uh, maybe to tell us more about the campaign that you have, that More Than a Mother campaign. So More Than a Mother campaign is very close to my heart as a woman, African woman, and as also as a, a pharmacist, uh, which is uh, of course uh, very important because uh, uh, women in Africa and uh, of course also in Tanzania, they always be been blamed to be in the cause of infertility. While it's fifty percent of the causes of infertility due to women, men and women, men and women equally responsible for infertility. But not only that, uh, they've been blamed, discriminated, and mistreated, and abused physically and psychologically uh, uh, by their in-laws, mothers-in-laws, sisters-in-laws, and husbands for something they don't have any reason. I mean, is, is not? I mean, they are being blamed for something they have no hands. Uh, whatsoever and, and, and this is unfair and we should not accept that so we wanted to make a culture shift culture shift to say that look I mean even if she is the cause of infertility she's still a woman and a human being and she's more than just a mother and baby making machine secondly it's 50% of the causes of infertility due to men so we don't know until he goes to her in the ho with her in the hospital for testing test the infertility and and uh, joined the, the journey uh, of infertility treatment. Secondly, a big number now, it's 85% of the infertility can be prevented because it's caused due to untreated infectious diseases. Infectious diseases can be complication uh, for uh, genital mutation, uh, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, uh, uh, sexual uh, uh, transmitted diseases, yes, yeah, yeah. and child marriage, and, and all this, which we are advocating against every day. Complication of it can be uh, infectious, which is not uh, being diagnosed in the right time, not being treated, and complication can be infertility. So we want to advise all the teenagers and all the adolescents and, and, and youth to uh, practice safe sex and avoid risky behavior because this all can cause infertility in, in the long run. And uh, this is very important because prevention here is a key. Mm. You also being um, uh, from Africa, uh, what do you think is the, you, you spoke something about the culture shift. What do you think is the reason why um, 
the blame goes to a to females and not male because this is both uh, to bring yes. in the issue of infertility is both ma male and female so w w are there any researches that have been conducted to to understand the reason why the reason why is a woman being blamed uh, i mean culturally perceived that because she has she is the one who have the baby and uh, in her body or or, or yeah mm -hmm. she 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 carry the baby and uh, delivers the baby so everyone thought thought that if a man can practice his uh, ma marriage uh, uh, yeah. performance properly, then yeah. it's her role to have the baby, which is incorrect because yeah. men can be sexually active and, and uh, successfully, but uh, the infertility is completely different, different story and the vice versa. A man can have 10 children and be very much fertile, but he sexually is not uh, strong. So, so this is the idea that it's a taboo because men don't want to uh, associate this with their manhood. Mm. Uh, you, you've mentioned also on the causes of infertility and uh, within sub-Saharan Africa, uh, what are the main factors that lead to infertility? So look, I mean, as we said, 85% of the causes of infertility at the moment or around 85% for uh, women in the productive age due to untreated infectious diseases. There's other causes of hormonal disturbance which can be treated by hormone uh, yeah. treatment, but there is certain type which we, we call we call it uh, actually sometimes irreversible, because it causes destruction of the tubes and the whole reproductive health infectious which is not treated in the right time due to the things I said before, all the behavior behaviors we advocate against every day genital mutation child marriage. Uh, unsafe abortion, unsafe delivery, STDs, uh, schistosomiasis sometimes, all this can cause infectious diseases which is mainly does not uh, diagnose or treat it and can uh, uh, develop to uh, over the years to infertility. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And when is the right time that one should go and check on the issue of uh, fertility? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, first of all, uh, every woman and man, when they feel any something weird happening in their body, they have to go and check in the, with the doctors because they can then catch the, the infectious early enough before uh, infertility happens. But for the infertility specifically, after the marriage was one year, uh, uh, if there is no pregnancy, they can they can go and check, especially if they are above 30 years old. So they can go and check the doctors, and and uh, maybe small intervention can ha can sort out the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you are here in Tanzania uh, through my foundation, yes. and um, what are the activities that you've uh, tried to, to to host here in Tanzania, uh, maybe on the health aspect? Uh, I'm trying, of course, to very much uh, 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 focus on cancer, on, uh, the oncology fellowship program, the cancer access, and work more than a mother. So I came here before uh, um, uh, end of last year, and I met Her Excellency Dr. Samia, the Vice President of Tanzania, and invited her to, to be the ambassador of Merk Mordana Mother and to advocate with me to empower infertile women across Tanzania and Africa. And she was very much welcoming, and uh, of course, we, uh, based on that, we will also build uh, capacity for infertility. So we are going to, uh, actually we send already six embryologists and fertility specialists for training from Tanzania are we still sending more so they can go across the whole country and help uh, you know raising awareness and uh, pro provide the proper treatment for infertility because as much as long as you uh, uh, raise awareness about infertility prevention and management you need people to start to treatment and and, uh, and uh, provide the uh, care Care uh, uh, required. Also, we will advocate to improve the policies of regulation of the fertility, which is very important to make sure that the quality and the qualified fertility specialists who uh, are the one who's practicing, so we don't waste uh, patients or women couples time and efforts, money mm -hmm. as well. Okay. And how do you collaborate with the government here? Uh, government here, as we said, any uh, oncologist uh, w want to be trained or uh, fertility specialist, we have a request from the Ministry of Health to say that these people are going to be uh, a good asset for the Ministry of Health and they're going to go around 
uh, in the healthcare sector, uh, public healthcare sector, to help improve access to uh, either cancer care or fertility care or diabetes care. So this is how everything we do in partnership with the government, Ministry of Health, or uh, the government in general, or universities, academia, which is very important as well. Mm, talking about Muhimbili, yes. uh, what was done there? Uh, actually, we, as we said, all the pro most of the programs actually at the moment we are doing in Tanzania for training is through uh, Muhibi uh, University, yeah, yeah. and uh, they also the one who have all the doctors and the trainee which we have sent by them and recommended by them. So, for example, after Christina has been graduated, she has now uh, uh, working as the first person working in the first clinic, oncology clinic in. Uh, the university, which is a great achievement. Mm. Since the inception of uh, this uh, program here, the Mark Foundation here in Tanzania, um, how has this uh, program or the Mark Foundation itself impacted uh, women here in Tanzania per se? Uh, the program, uh, as I said, we started the program of Mark Muzana Mother end of uh, last year. Yes. So still, of course, in the process. So I think we can measure the impact a little bit later, but we we had with all the people who trained in fertility specialists. If everyone can impact ten women, only ten women per month, it would be a huge impact, definitely. So I think in, by end of uh, 2018, we can measure the impact of uh, on women directly and indirectly through the trainees and the embryologists and IVF specialists we trained, and also the advocacy and the uh, uh, partnership with media. It's very important. For example, a TV program like this, when we say in this TV program, for every, uh, in every house, for everyone, that you have to respect women, whether they have children or not, whether they are mothers or not, because women are more than just mothers. And they are not the only reason for infertility. Actually, men and women are equally responsible for infertility. So I call on every man to support his wife and go with her to the doctor and join, uh, share the journey with her. So because fertility is a shared responsibility. This message by itself, saying that the, the, the infertility is not a stigma, it's not a taboo, it's a condition and can be treated, can be prevented, can change lives, can transform people's lives and culture and, and change. So I, I call all the media personnel and all the media houses to take this as a topic, to talk about it, to augment the stories of suffering, of women suffering, because we have a lot of stories we recorded by video of women who sharing their, their suffering and stigma and uh, their, their uh, agony and public stigma. So, so we need actually to make a change by uh, all of us mm. together. Mm. Yeah, so I think this is a culture shift we are looking for. Yeah, talking about uh, public awareness, uh, starting from the grassroots level uh, to send this message, maybe engaging yourself with schools to secondary school and to universities. Uh, how has Mac Foundation come up with that? And in your future plans, are you thinking to accommodate something like that? We cannot engage uh, schools at that level, at a very, very low level. I mean, like uh, young, young children. I think we, are, we, we can go from high school and above whereas uh, they will be able to talk about something they understand, definitely. Uh, but uh, this is also through ministries of education. And uh, we will, uh, in some countries, we have a relationship with ministry of education, ministries of gender, so they go and, 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 and raise awareness in, in these uh, topics. Uh, but of course, again, media is very important, and youth organizations and social media, very important, because all this youth, and the young people are go to social media. For example, in our social media, we have one million followers, and we have videos about women suffering from infertility stigma and sharing their stories. And we have on these videos one million viewers. So all these one million viewers, if you see their names, you'll see that they are all young African women and men. So I think this is can really add uh, great value. Social media can play a, a role, uh, a fast, effective role, because if you use it properly. It can be a very good tool, and uh, of course uh, the media as well. Mm. Do you think that uh, Mark Foundation has done um, much in the issue of uh, uh, stigma? 
how I mean to destigmatize it, infidelity. Yeah, exactly. Definitely, because uh, we have two thousand videos from uh, twenty five countries uh, with women sharing their stigma mm -hmm. stories and how they suffer, and uh, we have supported all of them, uh, many of these women, almost two thousand women to group them in a group of support and to establish small little businesses for them because uh, after th there is a lot of women cannot be treated anymore because it's too late for them either because they are too old or because the biological uh, condition of their system is not uh, treatable anymore because i told you there is some effect is reversible if it's not treated early so uh, we said we cannot just leave them uh, alone. I mean, they share their stories, we will are upset, and we want to help the future couples. But what about these women? So we start to establish for them small businesses so they can be independent and have their own income. And you cannot imagine and, uh, the transformation. The transformation of in one month when they start to have their own business, their own purpose, their own training, they become a different than they, 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 they perceive themselves and society perceives them as a baby making machine and this is really effective and and the stigma is gone from these women and around and the communities around them and in many many countries and it's still it's still as a continuous of course to change a culture you need many years it's not only one or two years but uh, we, with the base we are going and also with the support of the first ladies because you cannot imagine how many strong women rallies behind the, 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 the uh, campaign and uh, the noble cause like first ladies of Chad, first lady of Niger, uh, Niger, first lady of uh, uh, Guinea, first lady of Gambia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, uh, uh, Central African Republic all these first ladies, uh, uh, the chairperson of uh, the National Assembly of Namibia, you know, and ministers of health of Uganda, minister of health of uh, uh, Sierra Leone, minister of health of Liberia, all these women and men, for example, minister of health of Ethiopia is the ambassador of more than a mother. And we are going to stab, help, help training and establish the first IPF in Ethiopia. It's making history. We are making history with uh, a man who is uh, not not only women are, are ambassadors also strong men who uh, believes in women empowerment can be ambassadors so mm. so i'm very proud of this minister of health of central african republic also a man and he's also ambassador for american Muslim mother so be with these people who take this uh, as as their own mission mm. and, and 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 realize the vision of empowering women is really great oh great mm. so I understand you're also one of the uh, the first uh, <clears throat> CEO for Mac Foundation, yes. and I'm proud about that. You being an African woman, Thank so you very much. Thank it's something you. very good. Thank what you. is your take on that? I am very proud myself to be uh, selected to be the first CEO of Mac Foundation and from Africa. Uh, of course, uh, this is great for us as African women. Uh, a uh, Merck Foundation non-for-profit organization but owned by the oldest pharmaceutical and chemical company in the world. So this is a great uh, thing and of course I will do all my best and my efforts to live up to this challenge and take it to the highest levels uh, and uh, make an impact every day touching people's lives and transforming people's lives. This is what I promise. Mm. When I say you from Africa, people don't get to understand, but you're from Egypt. Egypt, Egypt yes. is within Africa. Of course. And what is the situation <laughs> like in uh, Egypt concerning uh, infertility as a whole? And how do people Look, perceive I mean, that situation? Yes, and it's yes. different from, from uh, parts in, in Africa. Of course, there are certain parts also in the villages and rural areas still infertility, the stigma and the taboo. Uh, but in uh, the cities and uh, the biggest cities and uh, the capitals and all, of course, it's different, but it was the same 58 years ago. 58 years ago, it was a taboo, it was a stigma, it was only women are blamed and divorced and abused because of the infertility. Now, it's not anymore because there is a lot of IVFs opening, so there is a lot of treatment happening, and we will know that it's a condition and can be treated, and very rarely it cannot be treated, very rarely. So, uh, uh, but it's still in some uh, places like rural areas and villages, it's still needed, of course. Mm, great. So, yeah. uh, we are running out of time, but very Thank briefly, you. your message to Tanzanians concerning the issue of infertility as a whole. So, I would like to call all the Tanzanian women and men to uh, respect women and uh, uh, appreciate them, whether they are 
women, mothers or not, whether they have children or not. This is very important. And also, I would like to call all the young people uh, to uh, uh, avoid uh, risky behaviors and uh, uh, you know always uh, uh, keep yourself in check and and uh, um, support your wife in the future. Uh, and it's a journey, it's a joint journey. So uh, every uh, one need to know that women are more than just mothers. And this is my advice to everyone. And I hope that uh, this message goes beyond even uh, my expectation. Uh, it was then 20 years. I want it to happen now, that every woman can have her own respect and, and uh, appreciation in her community and society and family. Mm. Madam, thank, thank you, you very much for your you. time, sharing you. your views and thoughts to with us. Thank you very much. Thank Asante, you. Karibu. Thank you. Karibu. Asante, Asante, Asante. 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 Bye bye.